what do you think? What do you think, Kyla? Just a chance to make up another loss or uh, like you did last week. What's kind of the no, yeah, I mean, of course we love the rematch game here back in McHale against Oregon. Um, very talented team. Our big thing right now is just making sure we rebound against them. They definitely beat us on the glass last game. Um, but, yeah, it's always nice to host a revenge game back home. Is that uh, the biggest thing that was the difference you feel? In yeah, game? it was definitely the rebound. I mean, Dante was definitely killing us on the boys last game. Um, we talked with our bigs, talked with our guards, making sure we call, come together as a team to make sure we're Nobody's really getting offensive rebounds on the other end, but that's pretty much it. How do you change your mindset in terms of playing the guard position and trying to rebound? Um, I feel like I've always personally taken rebounds seriously, like as a pride thing. Um, you know, it's just definitely stronger, more athletic guys now on this level. Um, but it's not really that big of a difference, just myself and getting stronger, so it's making it easier. And then defensively, since then, your guys are three point defense has improved. Where do you see the growth in that area? Um, I would say everybody, actually, we've all been taking it more to heart. Like I said, everything's now a pride thing to us. Uh, we weren't taking it that serious, but we all have locked in together as a team, came together, and making that more of a primary thing as our core unit of basketball. When you were back on the game at Eugene, what, I mean, was that, that was probably one of the first kind of true road games, loud environment you played in as a freshman. I mean, did it stand out at all? Is this what you had to deal with? I mean, definitely being in that arena, everything is just kind of wild in that arena. Um, their own practice facilities and all that is kind of crazy, but. Uh, no, yeah, it was a fun experience to play down there. Does it feel, does playing Oregon feel like a, I mean, everybody comes at you with, a, with their best game, it seems like, but I mean, does playing Oregon feel like maybe one of the bigger rivalries that you have to deal with here? Um, I mean, possibly. I don't, you know, I'm new to the program, so I'm not sure which teams are really rivals like that yet, except ASU. But yeah, they're still, I mean, everybody wants to go at us and give us the hardest game. How do you think, oh, one thing we keep hearing about you is 17 year old freshman, 17 year old freshman. Um, I've got that out of my mentality the minute I got here. Um, I'm just a freshman here in college basketball. I've never really tried to make that excuse in my head that I'm 17 if I made a mistake. Or if I'm doing really well, I'm just 17. I'm just pooping. That's basically my whole mentality about it. Does he give you a hard time? Or what? I mean, all the guys call me a little kid here and there. But, you know, that's what I do. Tell me it said that he was going to give you until January 1st before he started evaluating. Did that kind of take some of the pressure off when you were kind of dealing with the injury to, to not have to try to feel like you had to rush back quickly to kind of... Oh, no, yeah, definitely. All the coaches made sure they understood that, like, it was going to be a slow progress for me to come back to somewhat myself. Um, Tommy made sure I felt comfortable. Coach uh, Murph, everybody made everything feel comfortable. Um, so I'm really glad he did that for me. How do you balance staying aggressive on offense and being fast with, with the fact that you still build up turnovers and games and sometimes not really good turnovers? How do you keep that balance and not? Um, how well my body is doing against this type of competition on a consistent basis. Um, of course, I'm super sore and tired, but the fact I can want to get up in the morning and go work out, go weight lift, go to class and come back and practice and still play you know, two games a week, you know, surprising my body. Did you, did you kind of prepare for that? Because a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of talk about freshmen kind of that wall in late January or whatever. It doesn't seem like you are really like uh, not tired. I mean, because it's been like four months. You know, you were pretty intense. Yeah, um, in the beginning, I wasn't playing as many minutes as I am right now. Um, so maybe that could have helped me in the you know the long run, not playing 20, 25 minutes every single game. But um, now I feel like I'm stepping up to that role of being able to come in, take some time for Curry, get some rest, and play my part when I'm on the court. Have you slimmed down at all? Yes, I, when I first came here, I was like 225, and now I'm like 205. Uh, I've lost about 10% body fat since I've been here. Do you feel faster? Uh, I feel way better than when I first got here, for sure. <laughs> but are you able to still have the strength? Because you kind of mentioned being like a bulldog kind of player. Yeah, um, I definitely gain in strength just by like my my body. I know I feel it, and I know I definitely look better when I first got here. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it, yeah. And I think there was at least one time against Washington where you, you drove to the basket and you haven't really done that that much. Do you feel more comfortable just being able to kind of go in there and, and take the contact? Yeah, definitely just playing in this system more and more has just got me more comfortable to be more freelance on the court. Yeah.
Do, oh, you, I mean, you guys lose. You guys can lose weight during the season anyway. Were you trying to as well? Well, yeah. When I first got here, I was way over the weight limit of getting my be able to play on my foot. So that was my biggest motivation, being able to lose. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Lose some weight so I can play on my foot. Um, but no, that definitely took that to heart and made sure I did. So even between, well, how about like between November seventh or whatever the season opener now? Are you about the same weight, or did you lose weight even since then? I've lost some weight through since then. Yeah. And what were those uh, training sessions you put down and just getting you? That was, oh man, I hated doing the bicycle before every practice because I wasn't allowed to practice, so he had me on that bike doing crazy things. But uh, no, yeah, it was fun. Was there any like nutritional stuff or is it just like well, yeah, stuff yeah like definitely that? changed my entire diet. When I got hurt, I was just you know sitting on the couch eating stuff like that, so I had to change my entire diet when I got here. What's something new that you've been eating that you've now grown accustomed to? I just put more greens on my place now. Um, Definitely I'm not a big green guy, but I still I have to eat them. What's your favorite green? Definitely say steamed broccoli. It's one of my favorites. Is that it? Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kyle. All right. Um, let's knock this out. Do you think the music on or off? Is it too loud? Yeah. You guys are hosting the Oregon Nate. There we go. He's working here. <laughs> Right, yep. You guys are hosting the Oregon schools this weekend. Can you just talk about the Ducks on Thursday and what you're looking forward to with that game? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're, we're playing a, a very talented team, you know, um, you know, that seems to be playing their best basketball right now. Obviously we saw it and felt it firsthand. And, uh, you know, they, they basically were able to kind of manhandle us for most of the game. So, you know, I'm looking forward to see how our guys respond. Kylan talked about one of the biggest progressions since then has been the guards' rebounding ability. What have you seen out of the guards and rebounding? I mean, th that game? would be nice, you know. I mean, I, I, mean I, I don't know if I've seen that or felt that. I mean, I think as a team, we've rebounded a little bit better, but uh, they, they really got after us in a lot of ways, and one of them was they kind of dominated the offensive glass. So, you know, I mean, you know, if you're going to win any ball game, you know, you, you, you got to rebound well. So, you know, hope, hopefully our guys, you know, got the message and will execute tomorrow. What so was most impressive about Dante and kind of what you did in that game? He's just a really good player. I mean, he's, you know, he's a physical specimen. Um, you know, he, he plays extremely hard, and uh, you know, he, he's got you know a couple post moves he's really comfortable at, and he, he gets to them, and you know, he catches lobs, and then you know, he's a, he's a force on the offensive glass. And he's just a physical presence, and he's an impressive young player. Do you expect them to play him and Fiddle together against you guys? They did. A I mean, I would imagine they're going to continue the same. I mean, they're playing the best they have all season, and you know, I mean, I mean I, listen, I'm not. At their practices, or I don't know what they're saying at their meetings, but I mean, they, they have a really good team that's playing really well. I mean, I'm assuming they'll kind of let it ride. Dude, does it make it a little easier for you to get your messages across and meet like this when they've already lost to a team like that? Like, I mean, so maybe I mean, they know what the, yeah, they, they yeah. want to. You hope so. Yeah. You know, you hope so. I mean, you hope it's got our guys' attention, and uh, you know. But but at the end of the day, you know, I mean, you, you try to prepare for the game, and then you know the ball is going to go up at 8:30 tomorrow night, and you know, hopefully, we'll be ready to play. Do you feel like too that uh, you know, every, like you say, everybody comes at you, you know, with probably their best effort or one of them. Does Oregon, on top of that, feel like one of the, the top? I mean, rivals you know, to play. You know, I've only played against them a couple of times, and they played played well both times. I mean, they're they're. You know, they're, they're, they have a coach who's won a lot of games, you know, they've had a lot of success in the program. They have really talented players, and that's usually a formula for being a, a tough night. So, you know, we, we, we got to come out and hopefully be in our best tomorrow. Yeah. What's, the, what's the key to three-point defense? I mean, you know, I think you make choices, you know, and, and uh, you know, I mean, you know, are you, are, you, are you heavy in the gaps off a certain guy? Are you, you know, taking away threes from a certain guy? You know, I mean, those are some defensive choices you make. And, you know, I mean, listen, there's lots of arguments, you know, about the impact of the three-point defensively. And, uh, you know, I mean, to me, I, I think to be a really good defensive team, you got to do two things. you you got you to do your best taking away threes, especially from three-point shooters. And then you got to do your best job you can protect the paint. And it's, it's a lot easier said than done. How would you, how would you adjust the line of change now after 40? Well, I mean, it's, you know, we, we played all right. And, um, you know, but I'm... I'm I'm, I'm focused on game five, and, you know, and how we play in game five. So, you know, hopefully it continues to go well. And, you know, you know I, don't, I don't necessarily want us, like, settling in and getting comfortable. I mean, I think we're at a time of the year where we got to keep growing and we got to keep climbing, and, and that's been the message for me. It's interesting what you say about the three-point defense, because wasn't part of it sort of adjusting to without CeeLo in there and how we were going to play off I mean, guys I mean, and not uh, having him in the middle? I mean, a, a little bit. You know, I mean, we haven't, like, you know, 
totally changed our defense just because of SIBO, you know, one way or the other. And, you know, I mean, maybe you make decisions game planning wise one way or another and, you know, and, and, and what you think is the most effective way to win that game. And, um, you know, I mean, but, but nothing great. I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, I, I, again, I haven't been pouring through the stats probably like you guys have, but I feel like the last, you know, five or six games, for the most part, we've been, you know, on an uptick defensively and hopefully that continues. When it comes to the decision between two bigs and one big, will a lot of that depend on what Oregon has out there? Not necessarily. You know, I mean, we, 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 we we're comfortable playing two bigs against, you know, small lineups. And, we basically do it almost every night. But what about the vice versa of going small against a two big lineup? Well, I mean, you know, now when you're, you're kind of tight your rotation a little bit, you know, and you and, and you got two bigs and you're bringing in, you know, Pella, kind of, you know, to play some of that four spot. I mean, you're just by your rotation, you know, you're, you're playing a small lineup more. So, I mean, it hasn't been anything other than, you know, let's, let's put the best guys we can on the floor over the course of 40 minutes to give us a chance to win the game. If that means you play big, you play big. If that means you have one small, you play small. If that means you play two smalls, you play two smalls. I mean, you know, it, you know, it'll all play itself out. Is Pell kind of a key guy for this matchup in the sense that you can use him when, when they're creating mismatches or, well, or whatever? Well, Pell is a key guy every yeah. for us. And, you know, I mean, obviously he's got a lot of versatility and you, and you can really lean in on that. I mean, he, he guards basically all positions. At the college level, he guards all positions on the floor really well. So, I mean, you, you have a great comfort in that. He gives you some defensive flexibility and versatility. Do you think there's a certain flow to the game that allows Kern to get going shooting-wise? What we saw last weekend, or was it just a matter of just got going? Well, I, I, th I think, you know, the, the better the ball moves, the better shots Kern gets. And, um, you know, and, you know, we want to emphasize, you know, moving the ball, moving our bodies, and, you know, hopefully that'll continue. And, you know, the party's Kern, you know, kind of locking in and making sure he's he's hunting shots, you know. I mean, you know, he the great thing about Kerr is, you know, he you know, he, he's looking to run the team and, and, and make sure that the team's in the best position possible and, and you know sometimes he you know he'll he'll let his shooting take a back seat to running the team and he's just gotta find a nice a good happy medium of doing both. We you talking about Oregon just that game here last year also was pretty down to the wire, uh, yeah, a couple I mean, of key I, stops there. What do you remember about that one? I mean we, we, we played a, a really good team that it was a hard-fought game. Um, you know, they came out and they shot the bell well early, and we were kind of able to weather that storm and, and, and find a way to win it at the end. But it by, by no means was it an easy or comfortable game. Yeah. We talked about today being the 50th anniversary of the Camp Center, just the history of this building, and you know. That yeah, I mean, it, 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 obviously, it's an amazing place. It's a it's an amazing place to go to work every day. And you know, I'm, I'm not a great historian uh, by any stretch, but but y y you know what McHale means to college basketball. You know what McHale means to University of Arizona, you know what McHale means to Tucson. And, uh, you know, I, I know for me, I mean, it's, you know, it's a big responsibility to carry that tradition forward. You know? So that, that's obviously what I'm focused on, but, but, you know, when you sit back and you look at the names that have played here, the teams that have played here, the coaches that have coached here, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty impressive place. And so I, I try not to spend too much time thinking about it because it might get a little bit overwhelming. So I'll just kind of stay locked in for here and now. All right, guys, you guys are easier. You guys hit the 17.